After installing Dynamat, I'm ready to lay carpet in the 66 charger. As you can see from these old photos, the original carpet was fading from black to brown. And this is how the carpet looked after I removed it from the car. Here's where I found that nasty mouse nest. Yuck. I ordered a complete ACC brand carpet kit from OC Auto Carpets. I'm very happy with the product's quality and fit, but I'd like to call out a couple of important points about installing it. First, the manufacturer leaves plenty of excess material around the outer perimeter. You have to trim these edges to fit, and you also need to make relief cuts to prevent puckering where the carpet folds upward, like at the kick panels. Second, you have to cut your own holes for the console brackets, dimmer switch, accelerator pedal, and seat mounts. I used a utility knife to make most of these cuts. This carpet is tough, so I had to replace my blade often. I began the carpet installation with the rear section because it gets partially overlapped by the front section. I placed the molded carpet roughly in position, but it wouldn't lie flat until I trimmed around the various brackets welded to the floor pan. I first made relief cuts around the rear seat retaining brackets. Then I worked my way forward by making more relief cuts around the driver's inboard seat belt bracket. Here's the hole in the original carpet that I'm reproducing. But instead of cutting out a rectangular hole, I chose to make just three cuts and later tucked the remaining flap of carpet behind the bracket. With that seat belt bracket out of the way, I next added slits to accommodate the center console mounting bracket. The factory hole was shaped like a barbell, but I just made two straight cuts. carpet snug against the drive shaft tunnel, I needed to go back and adjust my cutouts around the other brackets. I should probably mention that all of these cuts I'm making will be covered by the center console, the seats, and other trim pieces, so they don't need to be pretty. They just need to allow the carpet to sit in proper position.
I loosely installed the rear half of the console in order to help establish the carpet's final position. Well, that was dumb. And do you know what else is dumb? I forgot to press the record button on my GoPro, so I missed the part where I laid down the front section of carpet and trimmed around the shifter brackets. But I was smart enough to start using weights to hold the carpet in place while I trim it to fit. You can tell my blade is getting dull as I struggle to make this straight cut, which is meant to allow the excess carpet to lie flat on the door sill. And now I'm trimming the excess to follow the curve at the base of the A-pillar. I'm continuing to trim off excess carpet that is only getting in the way and causing unwanted folds. The driver's side is a bit tricky because you have to work around the parking brake, dimmer switch, and pedals. I periodically measured the position of the front carpet section to make sure that it was even on both sides. From the back of the door jam, I measured 25 inches to the trailing edge of the front carpet section. Here I'm trimming the carpet insulation to fit around the dimmer switch. Here's another chunk of excess carpet that can go. Now I'm figuring out where to make an X-shaped relief cut to accommodate the dimmer switch button. Where the tow board angles upward from horizontal, I need to make a couple of relief cuts to prevent the carpet from bunching up. I'm not quite done with the dimmer switch yet. The carpet kit includes a grommet or trim ring that keeps the carpet fibers from jamming up the switch and gives it a nice finished look. This grommet requires cutting a one inch diameter hole, which is what I'm doing now. Cool. 
the grommet has two flanges. The upper flange has a smaller diameter than the lower flange, so I made the hole just big enough to feed the upper flange through from underneath. Trimming the carpet on the passenger side is a lot simpler than on the driver's side. As before, I start by making a straight cut to let the carpet lie flat on the door sill. Next, I add a relief cut where the tow board angles upward. This cut follows the curve at the base of the A-pillar. In preparation for reinstalling the plastic kick panel, I needed to make sure the excess carpet was not blocking the mounting hole. With the ice pick marking the screw hole's location, I scored the carpet where it needed to be cut. Then I made a little rectangular window in the carpet for the mounting screw to pass through. These trim screws are special in that they have a smooth shank with limited threads, so you can't over tighten them and crack the plastic. Back on the driver's side, I still need to make two holes in the carpet to accommodate the gas pedal. This linkage has to poke through the carpet, and here's the hole it originally passed through. I made a slot instead of a round hole, and it worked fine. The second cutout has to be positioned around two mounting holes in the floorboard. In order to mark the position of those mounting holes in the carpet, 
I heated up a framing nail and poked it through both holes from underneath the car, thereby melting two holes in the carpet. It's hard to see, but a little puff of smoke is released when I push the hot nail up through the carpet. The rubber inlay from the original carpet has the exact shape and size of rectangular hole that I need for the base of the accelerator pedal. Here's that accelerator pedal base that requires the rectangular hole. Using the old carpet's inlay as a template, I scored the new carpet's inlay to guide my cuts. First I cut out the piece of floor mat inlay. Then I removed the piece of carpet. And finally I removed the chunk of padding. Now I can reinstall the gas pedal. The two studs on the bottom of the pedal pass through the two holes in the floorboard. Then they're fastened with hex nuts. Now I'm ready to reinstall the driver's side kick panel. As before, I use the ice pick to line up the hole in the plastic kick panel with the hole in the sheet metal, then insert the trim screw and tighten it. Originally, this shifter boot sat under the carpet and was mounted directly to the transmission tunnel. The original carpet had this round hole for the shifter linkage to pass through, but I like this finish look better with the boot mounted on top of the carpet. Either way, the center console completely covers it. Speaking of the console, I temporarily reinstalled the front half of it to make sure everything was situated in its final position before I trimmed the door sills. Likewise, I figured the seats and the seat belts might affect the position of the carpet once they're bolted down. But in order to install the seats, I first needed to create eight one-half inch holes in the carpet, four per seat, using the ice pick and the red hot nail. 
I located each hole in the floorboard using the ice pick. Next, I heated up the nail until it was red hot. Then I swapped out the ice pick with the nail and swirled it around in a circular motion, following the edge of the hole in the metal floor pan. This melted the carpet and padding, leaving a nice clean hole that won't fray. I had difficulty locating this hole through the carpet, so I decided to insert the ice pick from underneath the car. With the holes done, Grey Cat and I are ready to install both front seats. Which means I can finally trim off the excess carpet at the door sills. Referring back to the original carpet, you can see that we need only about a half inch of material to tuck under the threshold plate. This is because the carpet margin should only cover this pinch weld. If the carpet were to cover any part of this flat mounting surface, it would cause the sill plate to sit too high and the bottom of the door could rub against it. I'm sure the pros have a better method for marking carpets, but I found that pressing the contour lines into the material worked well.
Back here, below the windlace, there's a hole that receives the rearmost screw that fastens the threshold plate. That hole gets covered up, though, when I tuck the carpet under the windlace. There's another hidden hole for the frontmost screw that attaches the threshold plate. It, too, gets covered up when I tuck the carpet under the trailing end of the plastic kick panel. Now I need to locate that hidden screw hole. I'm using the ice pick again, but this time I have to poke through two layers of carpet. There's the rear floor section of carpet that you saw me install earlier in this video, plus a carpet insert that is glued to the interior side panel. Each sill plate gets two of these long trim screws that are fully threaded. One goes at each end. Up front, there's only one layer of carpet to go through when locating the hidden screw hole. Next, there are four small flange head screws to install. These four small screws should be cinched down all the way, but don't over tighten the two long screws at either end, otherwise they will bend the corners of the sill plate. Same process on the passenger side. I tuck the carpet under the trailing end of the plastic kick panel. Then I make a pilot hole through the carpet into the hidden hole. I find this makes it easier to insert the screw later. 
It's similar at the back end of the threshold, except that there are two layers of carpet to go through. I first make sure the carpet from the floor section is in proper position, then I poke a hole through it. Then I lay down the carpet from the interior side panel on top of it, tuck everything under the wind lace, and finish making my pilot hole. I use these mounting holes to make sure the sill plate is correctly positioned. I lightly tighten each screw on my first pass, then I go back over them one last time. And that's a wrap. The carpet is done. Thanks for watching.